and welcome to Winning Conversations. We're so glad you're here. Today we are jumping into our Summer Miracle Series. We found four incredible stories in our own church body of people that have received healings, financial breakthroughs, divine protection. We want you to be encouraged as you listen to these stories over the course of the month. I know that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's waste no more time and jump in and hear this incredible story. We are excited for today. We are sitting down with Bill Parker. How are you? Good. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> now, when I thought about doing this summer miracle series, you were one of the first names that popped in my head. And I don't know that everybody even knows your story very well, but how long have you, you guys been here, you and your wife? At Heritage of Faith, we've been here about 20 years. Wow. It's a good amount of time. That's a long time, <laughs> yes. That's a very long time. And we've seen you guys raise Brody and yeah. her growing up, and you guys do a whole lot with outreach. What all do you do? Uh, we work with uh, Heritage Kids. Um, right now during the summer, we work with the train, but mainly the greeters and okay. the, dealing with the computers. And then we also do the outreach uh, on monthly Saturdays. We're passing out food to families in need. And, uh, and then I also work with the um, victorious adults and just making sure their computers and getting everybody checked in and all that with them. I feel like the Parker family is everywhere. Y'all are just all over the place. <laughs> y'all do so y'all do so much here. <laughs> I, I didn't feel that a little bit. Not much. <laughs> I feel like you know, there's a lot, everybody contributes. So yeah. I, I, I do my part and that's about it. So I, I hear your name, Bill, the printer's, the printer's messed <laughs> yes. up, Bill. Somehow or another, iPad. I can problem solve computers very, very well. So. <laughs> and then your full-time job is teaching, right? Yes. Yeah. Teaching what? high school mathematics. So all the Couldn't way from be me. Geometry. Good for you. Love that calculus. for you. Yep. Love yeah. that for you. Don't quiz us. <laughs> and then I also teach <laughs> no. at Tarrant County College mathematics there too. So That's wow. awesome. Yeah. So very much uh, teacher, outreach, family guy. We already talked to Lynn on her podcast about your little mini farm. Go yes. back and check it out. Family farm. Yes. Um, but I don't know that people know the story because of the timing of it and what God did in your in your physical body with healing. So we're going to talk a little bit about a cancer diagnosis. Okay. And it happened just right before COVID, right? It did. So everyone went on lockdown and nobody really uh, knows the story. I don't think. No, unless they, I don't believe so. Unless they were just in the services that, that things happened with. So why don't you just open up and tell us what happened? What did God do? Well, um, for some reason, I was no longer able to move solid foods. And so at that point, I'm thinking, okay, well, I've got something going on with my colon. And so, of course, you know, with Google, I do all these kind of research. Dr. And think, Google. Oh, I've got some kind of, you know, uh, this um, colon where I might have to get part of my colon removed. As my, my diagnosis is what I figured out. Your you know, self-diagnosis. Before I go, that's right. So, <laughs> Dr. Google. Yeah. 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 So, so I thought, okay. Um, tried several different things. Um, just going on a liquid diet and everything else that, of course, Dr. Google says I need to do. So 10 days I, I didn't eat and just had liquid diet and great, everything felt fine. And then I uh, eat the solid food again and still wouldn't pass. The only thing that would milk of magnesia would help things finally pass through. So I think, okay, well, tried that twice. And in that process, lost about 20 pounds and thinking, well, I probably need to go onto the doctor and go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah. So Valentine's Day comes of 2020, and I go into the emergency room at Hughley. And, of course, waited forever and, and said, okay, well, this is what's going on. And so they uh, did a CT scan and uh, came into the uh, room. The doctor came in and sat down and said, well, you have a carcinoma the size of a bowling ball sitting on your kidney. Oh, I said, okay, interesting. And he says, well, we're going to have to keep you over tests and overnight and all that thing. And so I'm like, okay, well, it's Valentine's Day. So I don't want to ruin it for my wife. And so I didn't tell her that night. I yeah. wanted to give her one more peaceful night. And because I knew, it, you know, it would put a lot into her, you know, into her. And so, 
So I told her, I said, well, they're going to have to run some more tests. I will know <laughs> more tomorrow. You know, which Happy was Happy Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So which is true. Oh. They still had to run more tests. And so then the next day, then I call her and tell her, uh, tell her the situation. And they kept me in Hughley. Um, of course, you know, I'm still thinking the colon, you know. So, yeah. um, so after they searched everything, they said, well, it's not touching your colon. So they're not sure why I wouldn't be able to pass mm -hmm. any solid foods. But it was sitting on my kidney, my spleen, my um, pancreas. And so they did plenty of tests. And they also said, oh, it looks like it's, you know, possibly spread to your liver and your lungs as well. And I'm like, lovely. And so throughout all of this, I'm, I've had no fear. I've, I've handled it very calmly. It was very, I just felt a calm about it. But that night I contacted two people, um, Valentine's night. And the two people I contacted was Justin, mm -hmm. Pastor Justin. And I just told him to pray mm -hmm. about healing for my body. Didn't say any specifics. And I, and I called Stephen Baldwin and said the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I said, just pray in the spirit over, over healing. And so they were, they got their prayer warriors. And I said, get your prayer warriors and just pray. I said, don't need to contact anybody. Don't make, mm -hmm. I said, you just pray, pray in the spirit. And um, so then the next day I told Lynn and of course, um, you know, at least Justin and, and Stephen and them had gotten with Lynn and everybody and they just started praying. And so through the three days or four days I was at um, Hughley, they had run some more tests, did a colonoscopy. There was nothing wrong with my colon. Everything was actually very clean and very beautiful. I'm like, okay, great. No reason why I had any obstruction. Mm -hmm. So, but God, right? God was the one that, because there was nothing that should have caused me to stop it. That's what caused me to go into That's the emergency room, right? right? So I wouldn't have gone in otherwise. Mm -hmm. And of course, a bowling ball sized tumor, apparently you don't feel anything. And you know, it's, it's, I didn't, wasn't bothering That's me wild. at all. Isn't it insane? That is so, wild. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the, uh, so they ran more tests and as we're praying and everything else, by the time uh, Monday rolled around, the liver and the lungs, what they saw on them was gone. And it was only the big tumor that was still sitting on my kidney that mm -hmm. they could that they saw. Wow. So at this point, the urologist there says, well, this is sitting on your kidney. It's also touching your spleen and your pancreas. And he says, I can't do anything for you. He says, I won't touch it. He says, um, you're going to have to go to um, who I think would be, you know, that can handle this type of, we can't handle this at this hospital. He said, you're going to have to go to a hospital that can handle that, that type of uh, cancer and surgery. And I said, well, where is that? And he said, UT Southwestern. And I said, oh, okay. So they gave me the name of the doctor, the urologist there at UT Southwestern. Mm -hmm. And at that point, sent me on my way. And so after, you know, we talking with the um the cancer, you know, the doctors and everything else. And at that point, there was, it was just considered that well, the best thing they can do is go in and, and remove it. Yeah. And, um, but the urologist there wouldn't touch it because of where it was at and the size of it. And so, so we, at least at that point, they didn't see anything else except that one tumor, or at least the others had disappeared because they mm -hmm. said they were there. They were confident they were there. So after, you know, however many x-rays and CT scans that they went through, they had gone. So praise um, God. I did mean, that, that's, God. that's yeah. significant. Did that like put more hope in you? Like you were more hopeful that because you saw that and they had given you this initial diagnosis with your lungs and everything. And then it turns out that was clear. Did, I mean, how did you feel about all of that? I felt the prayers were working. Yeah. Because <laughs> if I, I went back and I looked at my text messages to Justin and to Stephen, and, uh, and every time I was like, okay, um, they're biopsying my liver and they're doing a biopsy on my lungs. I said, just send your angels and your prayer warriors and pray um, that these come back clean. Yeah. Because this is the key if it's in one tumor or if it's spread. 
is that was the key. If it metastasized, world of difference than if it's right. just one tumor. And according to them, it had metastasized and it was spread into my liver and my lungs as well. And so as they had did the biopsy and you know how they have to do more tests, then that's where I said, this is where we need to pray. This is where we need to pray. This is where we need to pray. Yeah. And so we just, you know, and then of course on Sunday, I think Lynn said the whole church prayed as well. Um, and then by Monday, that's when they were clear. Yeah. Wow. And so Praise at least God. the yeah. liver and the and the lungs were clear. That's significant because the way that they offer treatment in the, in the healthcare sense has to do with the staging. So you get into like metastatic cancer spread throughout different parts of the body. The treatment options change mm -hmm. yes. because just because you take the bowling ball out doesn't mean you don't have more to deal with. So sometimes they don't even offer that as a treatment. So that was that's a huge. It was huge. They were already talking about doing you know laser radiation and that kind of thing on the liver and the and the lungs to work on those. And then you know of course they discuss chemo and everything else. Mm -hmm. And so. So that part was since they were gone on Monday, then they had finished their test. My colon was clean, everything else. Then they pretty much said, well, we can't do anything else for you. Goodbye. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so after Monday, everything coming back clear on Tuesday, then I'm released. They didn't give me any kind of uh, referral. They didn't get me an in. They didn't get me a contact or anything to UT Southwestern. They just said, this is who you need to call. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, okay. Um, so Tuesday I'm walking out to the car and I'm trying to contact UT Southwestern mm -hmm. just through the front door. I am Googled the phone number and started calling the phone number and contacting at least the doctor that they recommended. And at that point, they said, well, there, we can't get an appointment to see him until April. And, it's and this February. is February 17th and or 18th or something. And so I wouldn't be able to see him until April, at least for my first initial appointment, because he was so booked. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> and so, so I'm thinking, okay. Well, I, of course, then started doing my research, sitting in the car, the parking lot at Hughley, and uh, I was in the car, I think, for several hours um, and searching around. And, of course, UT Southwestern is in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And my also concern is making sure I can go back to work because I wanted to, you know, get back to work and, and not miss any more days. And so I find then um, another, the only doctor that comes to Fort Worth to do um, once a week to do appointments to, mm -hmm. you know, to sit and, and his name was Dr. Waldo. And I'm like, okay, perfect. He comes to Fort Worth. I don't have to drive all the way to Dallas. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking convenience and being able to work. And so I find him, call him, and I was able to get an appointment with him within like five days. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> So and in Fort Worth because he nice. only comes to Fort Worth once a week, <laughs> right. and the next time he came, I think was that Wednesday, and so uh, so I set an appointment, was able to go see him um, the following Wednesday, which I think was the twenty sixth, and uh, you know of course he was great, fantastic, um, but went in to see him, and he said, "Yep, you've got a uh, tumor," and he says. Um, we're going to need to look at removing that. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, we'll set that up, you know, in the next uh, period. And I said, oh, okay, when's that? And he said, oh, tomorrow, 10 a.m. Okay. Oh, like right now. <laughs> right now, right now. All right, let's like, do it. Fine. Come on. So no food after midnight. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently he found, I mean, as busy as the schedule was, obviously he was booked solid, but he squeezed me in at 10 a.m. because of the size of the tumor mm -hmm. and everything else, that it was such a big deal. Yeah, but of course he's acting like you know it's an everyday. Oh, you got a scratch? Let's put a bandaid on it. Yeah, you know, and uh, <laughs> and so <laughs> like okay, because we're thinking, oh, he's going to schedule me in two weeks or you mm -hmm. know, no, it was tomorrow, and so we had to go to Dallas the next day, the next morning, and and prepare. And uh, of course, this is February, twenty twenty, before COVID. Yeah, 
And right. so what COVID. was interesting was I went in and when I'm checking myself in, of course, they were asking the questions at that point. Have you been out of the country? Yeah. Have you been around anybody that's has COVID? You know, anything to that extent, because mm-hmm. of course it hadn't really come over to the U.S. in a, in a big sense. But um, so before surgery, Lynn and Brody were able to come up to the room and get able to, they actually got to come back into the back area where the surgery, you know, right before surgery as they're prepping me. And normally they don't let anybody under um, 12 go back there. Mm-hmm. And Brody was nine at the time, and but they let her back there. Nice. And so they, they got to see mm-hmm. me and visit with me before before surgery. And so that was a, that was a big deal. And so he went in, removed the kidney along with it. And of course, my main concern there was because since it was touching my spleen and my pancreas, mm-hmm. as there was a chance that they might have to remove all or part of those two things, which are vital in your insulin and your antibodies, right? right so, right. and really the rest of your life and, you know, how your defense system works and how your blood sugar works. And so, uh, yep. so again, that was another thing we began praying about that this was just localized to the kidney that they could remove it and just remove the kidney and not touch anything else. And sure enough, when he goes in and removes everything, there was only that and didn't have to, you know, he was able to go around and not have to take any, remove any of the spleen or any of the pancreas. Thank God. I'm God, so. <laughs> <laughs> and through this, um, my faith was not wavered. I, I stood and believed that, um, you know, God will take care of yeah. this and just our prayers and prayers and prayers and just standing in belief that, you know, that, well, that's what we learn in yeah. church every day. You not just stand and, you know, pr- say the word and pray, but you have that faith and you believe. But also and, the people you surround yourself with to build absolutely. you up and pray with you. And that is one reason when in the beginning I only contacted two people because sometimes when you contact more others want to pray and believe for you but they might believe the opposite and Could so bring they doubt don't and yeah they think oh poor bill yeah you know or something so then they've already got in their mind oh he's got a cancer diagnosed you right, know and all yeah. in my head was no i am healthy i am clean against you know i am free i am whole and so that's all I wanted to be spoken. That's mm-hmm. all I wanted to be prayed about. That's all we focused on. That is what was speaking and, and standing on that faith and believing. So we stood in faith and believed that I am free of cancer. I am healthy. I am whole. And so that was our main focus through all of this was through our prayers and through thanking God and believing and standing on that, mm-hmm. standing on the word and you know, speaking the word and speaking the word, health and wholeness and and completeness. So, there's something to be said about surrounding yourself with like-minded believers, yeah. especially when you walk through something like that. And I think people forsake the building part of that ahead of time. You had a relationship with Stephen Baldwin ahead of time. Obviously, mm-hmm. you had a relationship with your pastor. Those are things that people can learn to put into their life before. A catastrophe happens before yeah. you need significant prayer partners over something that seems as big as cancer, Absolutely. you know? So, um, just thinking about, I mean, you've been with heritage for, for a long time. You've been part of our church family. Why, why were those relationships so important at this stage? Um, I think again, I mean, you know, just as the word says and, you know, as, we're taught that you pray over something and you believe that it has happened and it is there. And if yeah. you're not around those people that believe solidly that that's the case, then that doubt creeps in and that's where then things might not happen. Yeah. And when doubt creeps in or when you don't have the faith that it is done and completed, then it, it might not be. And so I just, so, uh, you know, being around people that think and believe that then also strengthens you as well. Mm -hmm. So when any doubt tries to creep into your mind that you're able to stand with them as they 
pray build and you up believe and yes and everything else what about um lynn and brody how did they react to all of this i, read I mean brody was nine that's it afterwards yeah um i think they you know they pictured times without me there yeah. and and that's where they really get scary got scared but again that's a, like our people we surround ourselves with we yeah. can't let that creep in but those are real yeah. feelings and Absolutely. that's that's okay like you can yes. be scared but then you like be scared but then know, be, how, to know how to respond to it yes. yeah like no yeah know what to do then like know how to get in the word know how to pray all of that but those absolutely. are real feelings yes absolutely because i know lynn had cried several times and had you know but again she was very much and again surrounding yourself that you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. having people pray and standing up and believing this is you know this will pass and yeah and you know um, so i think um they were stood strong with the people that they surrounded themselves with because I was mainly in the hospital by myself while they had. Because it shut down after that, right? Like they yeah, didn't let not, a lot of visitors. The wonderful thing was, so I had surgery the next day, which was February 27th, and I was in the hospital for about five days afterwards. And so really still nothing had happened because it wasn't until uh, mid-March when the whole world shut down. Yeah. And... So in my mind, okay, this is perfect. I'll be off for a week. I'll have spring break, and then I'll go back to work <laughs> after spring break, right? Yeah. And uh, you thought? So, yeah. We we all thought. Yeah. We all were planning on yeah. that. Yeah. We're like this is a spring break that never ends. Yeah. yeah. So they everybody got to come to my room and visit, Good. and you know Brody and Lynn. So it was just normal times. Well, the five yeah. days I was in after surgery. And, you know, of course, the doctor said, we've got everything. Um, and by the time they released me, there was nothing there. And so there was no chemo follow-up. There was nice. no radiation follow-up. It was just a simple removing of my kidney and a bowling ball-sized tumor, and let's move on. And, of course, wow. you know, we had CT scans to double-check that, every, you know, afterwards and, and all. But uh, I left the hospital. And in perfect health, besides recovery and spring break, I was thinking I'm not going to have enough strength to make it back to work after even though two weeks. Um, but halfway through spring break on Wednesday, the whole world, they decided to extend everything. So you spring had a really long healing weeks. process, really long. I've got a six month. Yeah. <laughs> Rest yeah. Possible. yeah. I taught everything online, so I was able to stay home. Sure the entire time and so again just like the prophecy that you know um that rick and cassie had stayed over you know prophesied over us in january it was something to the aspect of don't look left or right stay focused on me that by the end of the year you'll be able to look back and say wow mm -hmm. you know look what this year has, has done and that you know God was with us the entire time. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what the prophecy God. was, that God will be with you the entire time. You know, I, the, one of the reasons I love the story is because the goodness of God is seen. Obviously, there's a miraculous um, aspect of it that there's just, you know, kind of a supernatural healing. The timing is divine in the whole thing. If, that, if you had had to wait two weeks till surgery, it would have been a completely different experience. Right. So yeah. the divine timing, the timing off of work, um, the fact that, I mean, God just took care of it all. I love that there's a beautiful mix of the divine hand, God's hand in it and medicine. You didn't, you didn't forsake one for the other. Right. Correct. Um, right. Yes. What um, encouragement do you have for people who may be walking through that and, and maybe struggle with that dynamic? I see medicine is also something God has provided for us as well. So I don't see that there is uh, any contradiction in using both, you know, there, you know, we need a band aid when we're scratching and bleeding, you know, we can't, you know, those types of things. So I see that those types of things that 
the tools we have that are God given as well. And so I don't see that there's a contradiction in, in medicine and also, yeah. you know, faith and healing and we worked through both. And so I didn't, I didn't ever question that. I just followed, you know, and, and prayed, you know, and use wisdom. God to, yeah. Yeah. To work through that. And he guided me to the right doctor, to the right time right. and everything. Cause I could have put off going to the hospital and I didn't. And if we would have went with the original doctor and met him in April, you know, which I could have waited till to see the, the, you know, famous urologist or whatever <laughs> that, you know, and, and that would have changed because COVID and everything else. Yeah. So it all, um, his hand was on all of it, but I, I feel that, um, we've, we've got to follow the spirit. We've got to guide and believe that he provides us with medicine, with faith, with healing, all of it working together. Yeah. And, and let it, uh, let him guide us through that. That's good. That's good. Come on in. So we talked a lot about the, the natural healing, the supernatural healing, but certainly none of this was free. So how did that end up working out for you guys? Well, uh, that was a miracle in itself. So I had a $97 a month insurance through my school, you know, through uh, teacher insurance. And um, it pretty much didn't cover anything except it had a uh, $7,000 um, out of pocket expense. So I pay everything up to $7,000, mm -hmm. right? Or like $6,700. And so then it would pay everything after that. And so we went to Hughley, of course, first the first few days, and we had definitely over $7,000 worth of hospital bills there. Mm -hmm. And then the surgery, which was taken care of, you know, at UT Southwestern. And so my insurance, of course, taking care of all that, well, I was still on the hook for $6,700. And that was through Hughley because all the rest was taken care of, all through a $97 a month insurance. <laughs> and, you know, an insurance can be outrageous these days. Yeah. And so I... Uh, so I'm like, okay. So I started working with Hughley on paying that off. And I'm like, okay, as I'm paying my bill online, there was a, a little link that said financial assistance. And so I went ahead and clicked on that. I'm like, let me see this. And I filled it out. And then I called the lady that uh, was in charge of it to kind of ask and come to find out we, we our income did not qualify for the financial assistance since mm -hmm. Hughley is a, is a, um, Christian based, you know, hospital as well. They offer, um, you know, those types of things where they will pay, um, or, you know, grants and things they'll pay, mm -hmm. your, pay off here. So I'm like, okay, well, let me check it out. Well, I found out we didn't qualify. I talked to the lady, told her, you know, my situation. She says, okay, no problem. You don't, you know, your financial doesn't qualify. I said, okay, no problem. So then I started paying, hooked up a deal where we were paying $150 a month. And so I made my first payment. And then after that, um, made another payment and then another payment. And then all of a sudden my, my second and third payment came back to me. And, um, and I was mailing checks at this point and then they mailed me the checks back. And I'm like, well, that's very strange. Mm -hmm. and so then I get online and look at my balance and my balance was zero. Well, <laughs> how, why? <laughs> Apparently now, I, you know, of course, God in this case, right. because apparently right. the woman that I talked to went ahead and put my situation in and apparently they went ahead and granted their committee or whatever, granted me the um, grant or whatever to, to wipe my bill clean. Which doesn't happen. No, because our finances did not qualify for it. So, Wow. So the $6,700 that I would have been on – had to pay cost me $150. So wow. Having my kidney removed and all came up to and I think we paid one other payment of $200 but it was a prepay at UT Southwestern when I went and saw Dr. Waldo for the first time but so it was about $375 is what it cost me for all God gives of good that. discounts. <laughs> <laughs> if that's not the definition of the favor of God, yeah, I don't know what real. it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Love that. Yep. So, Love that. So that was a miracle in itself. Yeah. <laughs> so at Heritage, our motto is making winners in life. 
we want to know what that means to you. Making winners in life means to me, I mean, heritage teaches us how to use the word and live by faith so where we can overcome obstacles that come in our way in life. And so making winners is being taught how to use that word and how to use God's goodness to overcome the obstacles that come in everyday life, but also those times when the devil is trying to put you down and, and, and bring you down and drag you down that we have the word and we have the faith that Justin and Dr. Savell teach us to overcome those and we become winners in, in those situations that happen to us all the time. And so um, I think that's where we become winners in life is by learning how to apply God's word mm -hmm. and God's goodness. And because knowing that God's got us, no matter what, God's got you. <laughs> I like and that. anything and everything <laughs> in life. It's a great answer. That's a good one. Um, well, Bill, thank you again for sharing your story. Um, I will go ahead and link the, I believe I found the service where they prayed for you. Oh, okay. Uh, so I'm going to link that in the, in the show notes. So if you weren't here in January of 2020, in February of 2020, yeah. mm -hmm. before the whole world shut down, then you can at least go back and, and hear the faith that was released for, you know, yeah. for people. But thank you again for sharing it, uh, your story with us. I think it's so powerful. I thank you again for joining us. That was such an incredible story. We know you guys also have a lot of testimonies out there and we want to give you an opportunity to, to tell us about them also. So if you go to our testimony page, there's a button you can click and I'll link it in the show notes where you can share your story of faith with us. We would love to celebrate with you. You know, the word says we overcome them by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. And uh, join us next week for another summer miracle on winning conversations.